Everything is installed now in the truck. Um, and I think it looks pretty damn good in here. All right, we're back in the garage again. Dave here from Stances Everything, and we're going to keep working on my 51 GMC today. Since I just ordered my drive shaft, and that's not going to be cheap, we are going to work on a couple things for my free column, starting with the interior panels for my dash. And that is going to be the panels that sit uh, here. You can see that I don't have my glove box uh, panel in here. I don't have the panel that goes there. There's an ashtray that goes there. There's a little trim piece across the top that says GM on it. I want to get all that stuff in so that I can look at my dash and it can look pretty done and then maybe we'll move on to the horn button and just getting everything together to see how it all looks and then eventually you know continue to the door panels and then uh, I need to put my headliner in. I have everything I just kind of need to get it done. Because I have everything in the garage that means I can do this for free with little else but just a little bit of elbow grease. Um, so you can see that I have my uh, interior dash panel here, this is the centerpiece, um, and uh, it's looking pretty rough. Originally, I thought that these were going to be too far gone. I know the guys at LS Fab make a replacement for this, but then I started sanding it a little bit, and I think I might be able to bring it back to a brushed finish. So I actually brought, bought some uh, steel wool from Amazon, and I'm going to give it a go and see where we end up. Uh, I'm actually probably going to put a piece of tape here and go at one side and see if we can bring this back because really I have nothing to lose with this panel. Uh, it's already pretty thrashed, pretty rough from over the years. So I might as well give it a shot. Um, so I'm gonna put the camera up somewhere. Uh, you know, I've got my cup of tea. Uh, I'm gonna put some music on and then we'll see where we end up after giving this, uh, you know, the old college try. All right, I've spent about half an hour sanding this now. Um, and you can see that I've actually made some pretty good progress. Uh, things look pretty good, but there's just some nooks and crannies that I can't really get in there too well. And then I got to thinking, you know, I was already willing to try some, some pretty fine grain steel wool. Uh, I ended up having to go down to 80 grit sandpaper. Why don't I try my wire wheel here and see if I can get a good base before working my way up polishing. So I'm going to give that a shot. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I did try it a little bit up here and I'm not really, uh, it, it seemed to work out pretty well without damaging it too much and it's going to give me a, a pretty good step in the right direction. So uh, let's try that out. wire wheeling it was the move this looks really quite good considering what we started with which is right over here uh, it's actually pretty remarkable um, so I'm gonna try roughing it up now again with this steel wool here and then I'm gonna hit it with some polish and see sort of how it comes out um, you know I kind of skipped a bunch of steps sandpaper wise but who knows this is from some pretty soft metal so maybe it'll come up uh, pretty good so I'm gonna skip uh, time-lapse and all that and we'll just come back with some polish and uh, see how it looks all right, so quick, quick, I used some uh, Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Uh, gave it a quick hand uh, sort of treatment here. And I am pretty stoked on how that looks here. Um, you know, if you look up close, it's pitted. I mean, it was this rusty before. So if you look up close, it's a little bit pitted. But I did put it in the truck, and it, it honestly looks pretty solid. Um, and, on, and I could uh, use... Uh, do some machine polishing on this, which I just might do, but I think um, you know this is this is pretty promising. I'm pretty 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 stoked on how this uh, this turned out. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some new tape on this. Uh, this is going to make an excellent cover photo. 
uh, just you know the before and after and how we're gonna get after this uh, and then I'll get after finishing this one and uh, I'll bring out the other stuff because uh, the other pieces do have some black paint that I'll have to restore as well but um, I would say that this video is already off to a great start so I'm pretty pumped on that I gotta hop in now and edit uh, another video uh, the previous video to this one finish editing that I'm definitely gonna come out this weekend and uh, bang out the rest of these pieces and hopefully get this all jammed into my dash and looking pretty solid pretty complete um, so uh, catch me in the next cut where I'm um, hopefully finished up this piece here uh, and we're moving on to the other ones that need a little bit of black paint and the same polishing treatment. I'm back working on the glove box and speaker cover for the dash of my 1951 GMC. In the last segment of this video I wire wheeled this down and hit it with a little bit of mother's aluminum polish. I was pretty happy with how it all turned out and honestly it wasn't too much work but a friend of mine reminded me of a product very similar to this metal rescue rust remover. And I realized I've had this for a very long time. The guys at Workshop Hero sent it to me ages ago and I honestly forgot about it. So I'm gonna try it out on this and see how it works. Um, you can see that this is rusted pretty well. And if this works out, then uh, it'll save me a bit of wire wheeling. It might actually help me from uh, sort of having to bring back the uh, metal quality of these areas where it's pitted. Or it'll just end up looking the exact same, but it'll make me, uh, it'll be a little bit easier to just polish it from there. So this product, you have to wipe it on. You gotta sort of, I'm gonna blow it off with air blower uh, to remove the dirt and stuff. You gotta wipe it on and then you have to wrap it with uh, some saran wrap to keep it moist while it sort of does its thing here. So um, I think I've got some brushes. I am going to kind of go all over this, wrap it up really tight, leave it for a while and then focus on, this is the glove box door. So we'll, we'll get this uh, polished up a little bit. You can see that it's uh, it's not in the greatest of shape, but it's also not in the worst of shape. And again, um, I have these, so I might as well run them for now until I can sort of uh, pick up something better later or just leave it and honestly forget about it. And then um, we are also going to do a little bit of refurbishing on this. So we're going to get all of the black out of these letters, polish it up, and then go back and put the black in. And the same thing with the bottom piece here that goes along the bottom. I'm going to polish this out. I'm not really going to be able to bang any of these dents out. If you see, this is kind of like a double-sided piece and I'm not really sure how I would get in there. Um, I mean, there's probably a way. I don't know how much I want to really mess with that and risk making it worse. Uh, so I'm just going to polish it out and then put it back. But first, uh, let's get this on. So I'll just come back with this all wrapped up. We'll shove it in the corner and see what the before and after is like. Okay, so I've got these pieces covered in the metal rescue rust remover right now. Just sitting there. We'll see how it works out, see how this product works. Uh, and then you, we can kind of go from there if it works out well. If not, um, wire wheel is solid and still working. So we can just hit it with that and then go back and do what we did on this side. Um, so while that is kind of doing that, I'm gonna sort of experiment on a few different polishing methods on this and see how I can bring this back up. Uh, just a reminder, this is the glove lock store. So I'll just try a few things on this. Um, and we'll see kind of how it comes back, how shiny it can get. Um, I might just start with the fine metal, uh, the steel wool that I got. I might kind of do that and then polish it with mothers and see how bright it gets. And if I don't really like it, uh, then I'll get into some sort of more aggressive methods with sandpaper and stuff like that. But let's try the steel wool and see, uh, see what happens there. Kind of as expected, the steel wool didn't really do that much. So this area I sanded and then hit with some polish. So I did quickly 15, sorry, 1,000, 15, 2,000, 3,000, and then the mother's polish. And uh, it might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but it did come up a lot better than sort of the rest of the piece. See, this is pretty clear and then it gets hazy as you go back down. Now it's a little bit hard to see the impact, especially because I did that very, very quick. Um, so I'm going to throw some tape down the middle, hit this whole side with everything that I just described. I might end up getting a buffing uh, bit that I have for my drill and kind of polish it out. And then we'll come back and really see 
how much of a difference that made uh, to everything. And then we'll do the same process on this piece here. Um, actually, actually, you know what, for comparison's sake, what I'm actually gonna do is I'll put a piece of tape in the middle of this piece. It's pretty it's pretty flat and it shouldn't take me too long to sort of bang out this one with, with the sanding process and it'll be a really good before and after. Uh, so I'll start with, I'll start with the damaged side with the dents on it, um, and then this side, and then, the, the, and then this side will be unpolished, uh, and we'll really see how it works with the sanding, sanding, and then polishing afterward, and just how how nicely it comes up. Okay, so it's a little funny every time I bring you back, my work area gets a little bit messier, um, but I did end up doing a bunch of different grits of sandpaper, mother's mag polish. I got my Dremel out with a polishing bob. And I think uh, even in here, this result should sort of speak for itself here. Now I know that these pieces aren't going to be perfect ever. You can see that I've got a lot of damage uh, in the middle here of this piece, um, but I think it will look pretty solid sort of in the truck. I think it'll be, uh, it'll look reasonable in the truck and definitely like a lot better than what this looks like and what this looks like. So I've got about half an hour or so before my son sort of gets back from a birthday party. I'm gonna keep plowing away on this one. And uh, I think actually, yeah, I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna keep plowing away on this one. Might as well finish it up. I'm gonna hit this one uh, probably, yeah, before I polish this one, I'm gonna hit it with some paint remover to get out the black paint. Um, and then we'll polish this one out. And, and then we will, next time I'm out in the garage, you know, a couple hours later, uh, probably shouldn't have got that on this portion here. I'll have to polish that back out, unfortunately. But anyway, um, we'll come back and we'll check on this and see if it's uh, if it's taken some of the rust off, which it actually looks like it's doing a pretty good job of in some spots. Um, so yeah, we'll leave this a few hours more. Uh, they say the longer you leave it, the better it works. So we'll leave that for a while, leave it for a while. I mean, we know how to bring all of this back up to this finish mechanically. So if this saves even 10 minutes, uh, it did work, but uh, let's leave that on there. The gel will do what it, do its thing uh, while I work on this panel here. Um, and then, you know, next uh, cut, you'll see me with a little bit more progress on this and we'll be unwrapping that. If you're wondering why the last segment just hopped into a time lapse, I got a little bit carried away wanting to see how the polishing techniques uh, I did on that other panel would work on the glove box. Um, so this is the glove box now. It looks way, way, way better than it did before. For, for comparison, this was the condition the entire glove box was in before. So I'm really happy with how this came out. Um, so what I ended up doing was sanding it with, well, this was actually in pretty rough shape. So I did 800, 1000, uh, 12, 15, two and then finally three and then I hit it with uh, with some um, some of the mother's aluminum polish that I've been using with my Dremel and totally messed it up so then I put mother's back on it I got out my princess auto aluminum polish kit this is actually stainless steel so whatever it worked uh, I got this bob out and uh, I went to town 
I used some uh, Diamond Bright truck polish, truck box polish that I randomly had for diamond plating and just hit this and you know what, I'm pretty happy with it. Again, it's not perfect. Uh, you can see that there's a bunch of dents and dings in it just from whatever, uh, but it looks really, really, really good compared to what we started with here. And uh, I can put this in the truck and I think it's gonna look mint. So um, I'm done for today. Uh, my hands are all black as you can see. I am not sure what my face looks like. I'm tired of polishing, but I'm gonna put it in the truck because I have to put it in the truck. So, you know, here's where we're at after a couple hours of elbow grease. I think that really, really, really looks good in here. Um, and uh, I'm not mad at it at all. And I'm really glad that I spent the time sort of polishing this back out. Um, I think it looks pretty solid. So the next thing is just gonna be finish up the ashtray uh, and get that all bolted in. And then I gotta figure out where my choke knob went so I can put that in. And then we'll pretty much be money in the interior. Uh, so I'm pretty stoked on that. I mean, obviously I gotta put my steering wheel and the horn and all that, but this side of the dash will pretty much be done. There's no glove box behind here. Uh, we'll get to that sort of in a later date. All right, this segment's gonna be a little bit short. Um, I got sent out this afternoon to uh, water some plants, cut the grass, you know, stuff like that. And um, I had to come out and sneak out in the garage and see how this uh, rust remover stuff worked out. So this is the first panel, it's all covered here. You can see that it actually looks like it's working pretty well. Um, and this is the second one. So let me just put the camera somewhere uh, and then we can unwrap this and see how it turned out. So I'm going to be unwrapping this with you guys for the first time. Um, I have not touched it since I originally applied the stuff and then put the saran wrap on. So I'm really curious to see how well it worked. It looked like it worked pretty well, but you know, the proof will be in the pudding as they say. So let's uh, start pulling this off. So I've taken it off here and it looks like it's, uh, it's done all right. It's kind of created a bit of a goop. I think the instructions actually say to wash it off with water afterwards. So I'm definitely gonna try that out and sort of see what the results are. Um, it does look like though, if I if I rub it here a little bit, it does actually look like it worked fairly decent. Let's uh, unwrap the ashtray and see what that looks like. The results look about the same. You can see there's a lot of loose rust here. Um, actually, it seems not too bad. Um, let me... Uh, let me go around the side of the house and spray all this down with water and then see uh, what we're left with after that. Okay, as you can see by all the water, I'm back from rinsing this off and uh, it kind of worked. I mean, it worked pretty well in the ashtray here. Um, you know, maybe when I dry it off, a little bit more will come off. Uh, you can see here though where, where this, this was more pitted. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to wire wheel this down. Um, so, you know, it was okay. Uh, for free, definitely, it gave me a good head start. And it'll definitely take me less work to kind of get this side to that after using it. Um, I might try this uh, stuff on a couple other things if I have any else, anything else that's rusty. See how it fares. I mean, this was pretty pitted, so I don't, uh, I don't fault it completely. Um, they did say that if it doesn't come off in sort of the first step, you can reapply and do it again. Um, because I have a wire wheel, I'm just going to wire wheel it down. It'll just be a lot quicker and help me get this done for that for the video. So uh, I'm going to wire wheel this and then we'll come back uh, and just see how it looks after a wire wheel and then we'll start the polishing process again. And then we got to do the same thing for that. I've wire wheeled this entire piece now. Uh, I am going to go have to go back through and polish it. I'm actually going to probably sand it like I was sanding everything else, polish it back up. And then I do have the ashtray door as well. It sits there. Um, once I removed the handle, actually, this came off, which sort of surprised me. So uh, once I pop this off, uh, this whole thing came off. It actually just clips in at the bottom here and then this holds it in at the top there. Um, I was a little worried at first that uh, I'd wreck some adhesive or anything like that, but that's just some of the rust removal stuff that I was using there. Um, so it's, it's, it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna go through and you know painstakingly sand this and bring it back up, try and get it to a nice good polish. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do the same to this one. I haven't hit it with paint remover yet. I imagine once I start sanding it, some of this, some of that black will start to come off. Actually, it just came off with my finger there, so it shouldn't take too long for that black to to come off. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's just going to be a lot of sanding. So uh, I'll set you guys up somewhere to see sort of the progress, cut in and out of time lapse, and uh, we'll get this all polished back up.
through and polish this piece and you can see that some of the areas did polish out really well and some of the other areas are a little bit cloudy um, honestly if I was to try and get this to be very consistent I have to sand it pretty aggressively and I'm not really sure that I want to do that just yet um, I do know that this is a different kind of metal than this is uh, especially like from the factory so this is gonna polish out a lot easier whereas this one's just gonna be a little bit rougher um, I think I'm okay with that I'm gonna put it together and kind of see how much I like it I definitely okay with it for for this year um, if I put this piece in which is the ashtray which I haven't done yet you can see that it did come up quite a bit um, and it is a pretty big difference between sort of this and that so I'm gonna end up uh, doing the ashtray door with the same amount of effort that I put into this um, and then yeah we'll put it all in the dash and we'll see how it goes uh, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm going to do this tonight. Uh, I'll come back and do this. I'm honestly polishing. You can see my hands. Uh, it just gets a little bit boring. So uh, I've kind of put in enough effort for tonight. Um, but maybe I'll just drop this in the dash and we'll see how this looks. I just can't leave well enough alone tonight. Uh, I grabbed some of my paint stripper and I just uh, applied it to this so that when I come back um, to work on it next, um, this will all be coming off this stuff works pretty quickly um, if I go through now even with the paintbrush here you can see that it's it's taken it off already um, I just put this on so I'm gonna give it some time to set um, but it's working off pretty quickly actually uh, so I should have this all done oh, you know what let's just sit here and we'll we'll get it done right now Okay, so this is all now pretty much taken care of. Uh, the black is off, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this inside, I'm gonna wash it all down, uh, come back, polish it all out, and then we'll go over and do the lettering afterwards, I'm pretty sure. Uh, pretty sure I'm gonna get my wife to do this. She's got a steadier hand than I do, and um, she'll chirp me relentlessly if I do a bad job of this, uh, especially because she's gonna see it all the time. So let's um, clean this off, I'll come back, uh, this will be polished and hopefully painted and then we can put everything in the truck. Okay, last day for this video, I sat down and did a bunch of polishing and I saved you all watching more time lapse of me sitting on my very dirty bench and polishing stuff. And now we can finally do the reveal. So everything is installed now in the truck um, and I think it looks pretty damn good in here, uh, all said and done. I had to toss the wheel in too so you can kind of get uh, most of how it's going to look. Now that wheel will be painted at some point if I decide to keep that wheel. It's pretty big, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get on the road with that wheel, don't worry, and then we'll see down the road if I end up changing it. But let's get back to this. So it looks quite good for all refurbished stuff. Um, I gotta say that the, the polishing really worked really well. Uh, if you remember, this was all rusted and pitted. It is not perfect by any means, but it is quite a bit better. Um, we played a little bit of an audible with the uh, lettering up here and decided not to put any black in it. Uh, that was my wife's call and I think it looked pretty good. Um, you know, black would have just looked a little bit weird because there's not really too much black in the interior uh, other than my HVAC controls and a couple buttons. Um, if anything, it should be white or blue, but for now we're just going to leave it like that. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty, uh, pretty pumped with how it all works. Uh, as I said, there's nothing behind here yet. Um, I do have to run some hoses up to some vents and stuff like that. Uh, I have no speakers behind here. As you can see, I have a radio delete, so there was never any speakers in this truck actually when I got it. I do plan to eventually take this off and put some speakers back there, but that's not something we're going to do to uh, before we get running. So close that all up, and I think that uh, this looks really good. So I'm going to call it for this video. Uh, we can head over to the board and strike this off, and then we can keep rolling. We're back at the board, so not too long ago we did rear cab mounts. Uh, we did the hard line, loom the hard lines, shift indicator. Now we have interior panels and dash crossed off. Um, and then going back to sort of under its own power, measure for drive shaft, that's well and truly done. All the measurements are over there. Um, drive shaft has been ordered, so it is being made right now. So hopefully in the next video we can install that and move on to the drive shaft cross member. If not, um, we will probably end up working on uh, 
probably horn and mount my steering wheel, I think, will be next. So obviously, um, actually I should move horn and mount my steering wheel onto moving under its own power because I can't really drive it without my steering wheel on. But that being said, it doesn't have to be permanently mounted. So whatever. Um, we'll get there. We are making good progress on this truck becoming a thing. So thanks again for watching this video. Um, just like all my other videos that I've been doing recently, uh, I'm going to get right back into filming the next video this week. Not tonight because it's uh, midnight pretty much. Um, but yeah, once again, thanks for watching this video. I've noticed that a lot of you are watching more of my videos. So thank you so very much for that. But do feel free to give a like and a comment. Um, and we will see you in the next video, which won't be too long.